Yu Yu Hakusho is a Toonami staple and a very good spooky sp series. As far as green wearing anime dudes go, there was uh, Deku, there's Gon, but first there was Yusuke Urameshi, who is my first and personal favorite. Yu Yu Hakusho timeline starts now. 1,000 years before Yusuke's death, by the way, it starts with him dying, Yoko Kurama, a demon fox, and his lieutenant Yomi run a gang of bandits in Demon World. Yomi is one of the three demon kings, and his actions are often rash and irresponsible, costing the lives of many of their fellow bandits. Yoko orders a hit on Yomi, but his assassination only manages to blind Yomi. 700 years before Yusuke's death, another one of the demon kings, Ryzen, indiscriminately eats humans until he falls in love with a human woman. How? Why? Explain. <laughs> Unlike other humans, she is aggressive and confident, leaving Ryzen smitten. After their meeting, they have a child, and Ryzen vows not to eat humans until they reunite. Wait, what? He, he's gonna start eating humans again when they reunite? She eventually dies before they can meet again. I forget, I didn't say that part. 50 years before Yusuke's death, Genkai and younger Togoro, two skilled fighters, fall in love and become known demon slayers. Their names echo throughout the land. Side note, younger Togoro, the one with the sunglasses, will be referred to as simply Togoro from now on, and elder Togoro will be called elder Togoro moving forward, just for simplicity's sake. Now their fame draws the attention of a demon named Kairen. The demon appears at Togoro's dojo and slaughters his acolytes, luring him into participating in the dark tournament, a no-holds-barred demon slugfest. I don't wanna say slugfest. A no-holds-barred demon fight tournament. Genkai and Togoro, along with Elder Togoro and two unnamed fighters, win the dark tournament with Togoro killing Kairen in the final round. After winning the competition, the Togoro brothers wish for the tournament committee to change them into demons of the highest class. Genkai simply requests to not be invited back. <laughs> About 15 years before Yusuke's death, Hiei and Yukina are born to an ice apparition named Hina. Men are not allowed in their village, so at the village elder's behest, Hina's best friend throws baby Hiei off a cliff, exiling him, murdering him. Hiei is found and raised by bandits. Turns out he was not murdered, okay. In that same year, the Spirit World Special Defense Force corners the legendary thief Yoko Kurama. He finds refuge in the belly of a pregnant human named Shiori Miyamoto, bonding his spirit with that of her unborn child. The child takes Kurama's name, which is a little disappointing because in the Filipino dub, Kurama is called Dennis. So he could have been the Kurama the Menace. It wasn't worth it, it wasn't. Around this time, uh, Kuroko Sanada becomes the world's first spirit detective as a junior high student. 14 years before Yusuke's death, he is born, cause you have to be to die. Yusuke is born to a teenage Atsuko Orameshi. 12 years before Yusuke's death, two after his birth, Shinobu Sensui, a supernaturally gifted human with a binary view of humans and demons, becomes a spirit detective. Kuroko Sanada retires to get married. Sensui meets and captures the demon Itsuki, but before Sensui kills him, Itsuki requests to watch his favorite show before passing on. They become friends and partners after that. 10 years before Yusuke's death, Sensui and Itsuki go on a mission to stop a nation, Black Black Club, a crime syndicate, from launching a demon trafficking ring. While on the mission, Shinobu witnesses humans torturing demons at an event called the Feast of Human Vices and changes his view of the world. To grapple with his stress, Sensui develops six other personalities. He steals the chapter black tape and quits being a spirit detective shortly afterward. Two years before Yusuke's death, Hiei learns that he has a sister who disappeared. Soon after, he gets a Jagan eye implanted by the demon surgeon Shigure, which the causality of that is um, questionable. One year before Yusuke's death, a young Kurama meets Hiei and they hunt down the demon Yatsude. Day of Yusuke's death, we meet Yusuke Urameshi on the roof, smoking and getting into trouble. Yusuke is universally hated by teachers and students alike, and his only supporters are his friends Keiko and the school principal Takenaka. While on an errand, Yusuke runs into another famed local delinquent and pompadour enthusiast, Kazuma Kuwabara, who challenges him to a duel, uh, which Yusuke accepts and wins effortlessly. After that duel, Yusuke spots a child playing with a ball near a busy street. He warns the kid to be careful, plays with him for a little bit, and then walks away. And when the child child kicks the ball into the street, Yusuke rushes to save him from a speeding car. He pushes the boy out of the way, only to be fatally hit by the car himself. Once he is dead, Yusuke meets a grim reaper named Botan, who reveals that Yusuke's demise surprised the spirit world. He's never been much of a hero, and this surprise means that it's possible for him to be revived if he can pass a test. He initially rejects her offer, but Botan gives him some time to think it over. Yusuke gets the once in a lifetime, or I guess technically not in his lifetime, chance to attend his own funeral. 
After being surprised by all those who care about him, Yusuke accepts Spirit World's test. Botan takes Yusuke to Spirit World to see the leader of the underworld, King Enma, and submit a request for a revival. Of course, Spirit World is a bureaucratic mess, so they're stuck talking to King Enma's son, Koenma. Yusuke's test is to take care of a spirit beast egg, ensuring it hatches smoothly and the resulting creature's personality will reflect the state of Yusuke's heart. If he continues to have an evil heart, a terrible beast will hatch from the egg and probably eat him. However, if Yusuke changes his ways, the egg will unleash a, uh, a sweet little monster like a Sour Patch Kid. Now that we've reached that pivotal moment, Yusuke's untimely death, I will use AD as an abbreviation for after Yusuke's death. One day, AD, Yusuke visits Keiko in a dream, letting her know he'll be returning to life soon and requesting that she protect his body until then. Apparently, his mom had already opened up his coffin and noted that Yusuke's cheeks were still red and his heart still beating and left him in the coffin. <laughs> However, he remains in a vegetative state. He's given the opportunity to contact Keiko and his family once more by possessing Kuwabara's body for a mere 30 minutes. Yusuke promises to pass the test and return to the world of the living and Keiko very soon. One month AD, danger strikes when a local arsonist sets Yusuke's home ablaze. Keiko rushes in to save him, but the flames prove too much for her to handle. It'll take a miracle to save them, and Yusuke gets just that. Koenma promises Yusuke a miracle if he throws his egg into the fire, but doing so, of course, would place him back at the first karmic square of his journey. Yusuke throws that egg without a second thought and instantly saves Keiko. Oh, but what? But what does that mean? Despite telling Yusuke this would destroy the egg, Koenma takes it and saves it for later. His instinctual act of selflessness proves his worth, and he is able to return to the human world, because of course, but only after one final test. To get life energy, Yusuke needs to be kissed before the stroke of midnight while he still maintains a golden glow. Three people receive a vision of the kiss, his mother, Keiko, and Kuwabara. Keiko answers the call and saves Yusuke. Hell yeah. Two months AD, Yusuke is back and Botan shares the news that he'll become a spirit detective. The job comes with all sorts of new gizmos and his very own spirit gun, an energy blast that launches from his pointer finger and what uh, the police think black people are capable of regardless. His first case is to track down three stolen artifacts from King Enma's personal collection. The Orb of Vast, Forlorn Hope, and the Demonic Sword. Each one is held by a different member of a trio of demonic thieves, Goki, Kurama, and Hiei respectively. Yusuke defeats Goki with some difficulty. Kurama chooses a more pacifistic route and simply uses the uh, aforementioned Forlorn Hope, which is a mirror that grants one wish at the cost of the wisher's life. Kurama attempts to use the mirror to save his ailing mother, making friends with Yusuke in the process. Hiei, on the other hand, puts up a solid fight, as people who look like Vegeta do, but Yusuke manages to defeat him. Botan assigns Yusuke to his next mission, to locate and defeat a demon named Rondo by competing in the Genkai tournament. It's a competition to become the disciple and successor to the spirit medium, Genkai. Becoming her disciple means inheriting her signature move, the Spirit Wave. Botan also promises him tickets to a big wrestling match if he wins. Yusuke arrives at Genkai's tournament and spots many other contestants, including his dear friend Kuwabara. They compete in many spirit energy-based games and conclude in a fighting tournament. During a pitch black matchup against Musashi the Swordsman, Kuwabara proves his worth by debuting his iconic spirit sword. As the tournament continues, it turns out that Rondo is competing in disguise as Shorin. Rondo defeats Kuwabara in the semifinal match and faces Yusuke in the finals. Yusuke wins the tournament and becomes Genkai's student. Unfortunately, his training starts immediately so he can't attend the wrestling tournament. Oh man, the tease, the tease. Timeline sort of diverges a bit here. Uh, in the sub, he's gone for a month, but in the dub, he completes six months of training before returning. I wa I wa we watched it on Toonami, so I, I gotta go with the dub. Eight months after Yusuke's death, Yusuke attempts to take a break from spirit world nonsense by going to see a movie with Keiko and Kuwabara. Unfortunately, the spirit world disagreed and the four saint beasts unleashed demonic parasites on their hometown and hold the human world hostage. The beasts demand to be granted passage to the human world or else they'll use their demon parasites to turn humanity into zombies. It seems like they already have access, but hmm, I don't know. Of course, this isn't okay with the spirit world, so Yusuke and Kuwabara head into the enemy stronghold, Maze Castle, to stop them. Koenma also enlists former thieves, Kurama and Hiei to lend Yusuke a helping hand. The group makes their way through the castle, battling all four saint beasts along the way. Kurama faces Genbu, the black warrior. Kuwabara goes up against Byako, the white tiger. Hiei fights Seryu, the dragon, and Yusuke is tasked with defeating their leader, Suzaku. As Yusuke's group is fighting it out with the saint beasts, Suzaku attempts to gain control over Yusuke by directly targeting Keiko and Botan with zombies. Yusuke reaches Suzaku and defeats him using life energy, but almost dies in the process. As he watches Yusuke dying before his eyes, 
dies, Kuwabara transfers some of his own life energy into Yusuke, allowing him to live another day. But what is life really at this point? At the same time, Genkai is visited by two representatives from the Dark Tournament, inviting her to compete this year. Eight and a half months AD. Hiei arrives and brings Yusuke a VHS detailing their next mission. They have to rescue an ice apparition named Yukina, with whom Kuwabara is immediately smitten, and who has been kidnapped by the wealthy criminal Tarakane Konzo. He hopes to expand his fortune by selling crystals made from Yukina's tears on the black market. Tarakane's plan was almost perfect, but of course he's unable to make Yukina shed a tear. So to break her, Tarakane of course enlists the services of the Togoro brothers and their famous apparition gang, and Yukina finally breaks when the brothers kill a baby bird before her eyes. Meanwhile, Yusuke and Kuwabara enter Tarakani's stronghold. They're making their way to save Yukina, fighting through Togoro's gang along the way, and Hiei is trailing behind them. Tarakane, very confident in the Togoro brothers and his own subordinates, contacts his closest underground associates, the Black Black Club, to place bets on who will win between Yusuke's group or Togoro's. Sakyo, a member of the Black Black Club, continues to place bets on Yusuke's group to emerge victorious, and of course his bets pay off. Frustrated, Tarakane decides to wager everything on one last bet. Yusuke and Kurobara versus the Togoro brothers. Yusuke and Kurobara win their battle, believing they killed the Togoro brothers using Kurobara's spirit sword. Meanwhile, Hiei defeats Tarakane's guard, rescuing Yukino from his clutches. So all is well. Sakio is rich, Yusuke is one, Hiei saved his sister, and Kuwabara got a kind look from a lady. Alas, when the coast is clear, Togoro bounces Kuwabara's not quite so fatal spirit sword right out of his chest with pure man strength. Soon enough, Sakio and Togoro are revealed to be in cahoots. Togoro fakes his defeat to bankrupt Tarakane and fund Sakio's plans. Togoro proceeds to execute a maddened and destitute Tarakane and walk away impressed by Yusuke's abilities despite the hollow nature of his victory. About nine months AD, Togoro surprises Yusuke in Human World, inviting him, Kuwabara, Hiei, and Kurama to attend an underground brawl called the Dark Tournament. If Yusuke refuses, Togoro will kill Keiko and Yusuke's friends. So it's not so much an invitation uh, as a <clears throat> threat. For fun, Togoro informs Yusuke that what he saw wasn't even a quarter of his full strength, and of course he powers up to 60% to prove that. About 11 months AD, with newfound strength, the group reunites at the port for the Dark Tournament boat. Yusuke arrives and comes with the team's fifth combatant, a mysterious masked fighter with no identifying traits at all. Whatsoever. Not, not even a little bit. After boarding the boat, Team Urameshi is subject to an impromptu battle royale. Yusuke remains sound asleep for this battle, but the other members effortlessly defeat the attacking demons. When they arrive at their hotel room, Team Urameshi is confronted by two members of Team Roku Yukai, Rinku and Zeru. After some light intimidation and Rinku destroying an innocent cup, the pair leaves, promising to defeat them soon, which is real easy to promise. The group attends the match against Team Roku Yukai, dragging around a still slumbering Yusuke Urameshi. Koema is tired of people roasting his little baby head, so he changes his appearance to that of a handsome teen. And he goes to his box office seating with Keiko, Botan, and Kuwabara's sister, Shizuru. Their first dark tournament bout doesn't go as smoothly as expected, and Kuwabara loses his match against Rinku due to a ring out. Kurama defeats his foe with ease, and Yusuke wakes up to face their ace, Chu. He wins by firing two successive spirit gunshots, finishing strong for a team. Urameshi. Fighting against Team Roku Yukai leaves Team Urameshi quite fatigued. Yusuke is struggling to produce energy and Hiei's right arm is out of commission after using it to summon the Dragon of the Darkest Flame. Togoro single-handedly takes on another team and emerges victorious. Kuwabara has an ominous dream about Dr. Ichigaki's team but is unsure what it means. A few days later, Yusuke finds out that Koenma has been taking care of his spirit egg and that it will be hatching shortly. Oh sh While wandering the forest, Hiei and Kurama are am ambushed by two members of Dr. Ichigaki's team, forcing them to sit out of the official match. Back at the arena, the remaining three members of both teams decide on a three-on-three -three match to determine a winner. The masked fighter uses their spirit wave technique to disable the apparatus controlling them. She loses her mask in the process, revealing herself to be a young, pink-haired woman. After fending off Ichigaki's forest ambush, Kurama and Hiei are able to find Mitamura and fully restore his health. With his leverage and team gone, Ichigaki injects himself with a serum, transforming him into a giant ghoul. Cause serums just do that. Even in this seemingly powerful form, Yusuke soundly defeats Ichigaki. Immediately after Team Urameshi's victory, they are called back to fight against Team Masho. 
Even with part of his team gone, Kurama defeats two members of Team Masho, but loses to their third fighter. Yusuke steps in, defeating two more members of Team Masho, which should count as a win, but unfortunately, the fair and balanced Dark Tournament committee voids Yusuke's win due to the lack of a referee count. Additionally, the committee bars Yusuke from fighting in his next match. Seconds before they lose by default, a heavily injured Kuwabara steps in to face Team Masho's final combatant. In the owner's room, Togro begins killing off members of the Black Black Club at Sakio's command. Yuki now arrives at the Dark Tournament to support Kuwabara and search for her missing older brother. Hiei is able to overcome Ruka's trap, freeing himself in Genkai. Kuwabara sees Yukina and gains enough strength to win his match, the power of love. Koenma hands Yusuke his spirit egg and it hatches in his hands, revealing the floppy-eared friend, Pooh. Minutes later, the masked fighter questions if Yusuke has enough power to win. She asks him to follow her outside and reveals her true identity. She is Genkai, uh, with a younger looking face because of some spirit world nonsense. Genkai reveals that her objective is to pass on her strength to Yusuke, who has been proven a worthy heir. Before his test, Genkai places a special device called Spirit Cuffs on Yusuke's hands and ankles. Accepting that power is a trial of its own, Yusuke struggles throughout the ordeal, enduring an immense amount of pain while trying to integrate Genkai's abilities into his own. The last three fighters of Team Team Urameshi enter the semifinals against Team Urautogi, and their matches are decided with a dice roll. Hiei fights first, easily dicing and dismembering his opponent, winning the match in under a minute. Hiei's second opponent, Kuro Momotaro, gives him a little bit more trouble. Kuro transforms into a new, nearly invincible animal, Beast Armor, every time Hiei gets a good hit in. Hiei eventually wins, of course, by slicing him up with a blade variant of the Darkness Flame. Kurama goes up against Ura Urashima, who tells him about his distaste for fighting, the immense guilt he feels for taking lives and his unyielding love for his grandmother. Ura viciously attacks Kurama because he loves it. He loves that <laughs> and he uses the age reverting tool, the Idun box. The box reverts Kurama back to his original persona, the legendary bandit Yoko Kurama. Using this form, Kurama easily defeats his foe. Pooh begins to freak out in reaction to Yusuke's immense pain. Due to their intrinsic connection, Pooh feels the need to be close to Yusuke and flies off in search of him. Yusuke is mere moments away from giving up on Genkai's spirit orb test. He is bloodied, defeated, and beaten to, uh, to bits. Pooh arrives on the scene with some watery refreshments. Pooh reinvigorates his spirit, allowing him to overcome the trial, and Yusuke goes to meet Genkai in the nearby pasture. At the Dark Tournament, Kuwabara is chosen by the dice to fight Shishi Wakamaru, but shortly into their brawl, Shishi forces a victory victory by teleporting Kuwabara out of the ring and into the first arena. As Timur Meshi is attempting to decide their next contender, a recently energy depleted Genkai appears to compete in the fight. Her eligibility comes into question as the mask is removed, revealing a much younger contender than before. But Togoro comes to her aid and vouches for her. Even though her energy resources have been depleted, Genkai defeats Shishiwakamaru. Team Urautogi is down to their final combatant, the elderly Onji. The old man is, in fact, a young man named Suzuki, who is defeated by Genkai. And after the match, Togoro confronts Genkai with an ominous message that their business will be settled soon. The following day, Genkai and Togoro meet in the woods for a final encounter. They clash with all of their might. Even with her strength depleted, Genkai is able to force Togoro to use 80% of his strength. Yusuke finally wakes upon Genkai's defeat and rushes to her aid. Genkai dies in his arms. Suzuki meets Kuwabara and Kurama in the woods and gives them some items to enhance their strength against Togoro. One lets Kurama summon Yoko Kurama, and the other improves Kuwabara's spirit sword. Sakyo reveals his plan to connect the human and demon worlds, and Togoro then slaughters the remaining Black Black Club members at Sakyo's behest. After their defeat, Togoro requests a glass of orange juice over ice. What the f***? Team Urameshi trains for one final night before the final day of the tournament. The next day, the two teams enter the ring. With Genkai's death and Togoro's overconfidence, both teams are short a member, so Team Urameshi is given Team Stud Koenma to fill in and Team Togoro gets Sakyo. The first match is between the flower fighter Kurama versus the explosive Karasu. The match is in Karasu's favor until Kurama transforms into Yoko Kurama. In this form, he easily outpaces Karasu. Even as the form runs out of strength, Kurama uses the death plant to kill Karasu. Kurama kills Karasu 0.28 seconds after the 10 count completes, so his win is voided. Because if nothing else, demons are all about punctuality. Hiei fights the behemoth Bui, whose armor is very powerful at first, but 
he managed to overcome that and win using an improved version of the Dragon of the Darkness Flame. Bui requests for Hiei to kill him, but Hiei shows mercy and does not. Hiei's powerful attack destroys the arena, so they gotta take a short break. Strongman Togoro walks back to the first arena and brings the original ring to the second arena, just using just strength. Just muscles. In the penultimate match, Elder Togoro and Kuwabara go blade to body, which means they hit each other with swords. Kuwabara is eventually able to defeat Elder Togoro by changing his sword into a fly swatter shape, and it just, it just hits him. Anime's weird, man. Anime's weird. Before the final match, Sakio and Koenma agree to bet their lives on Yusuke versus younger Togoro. If their team loses, they die. Elder Togoro reveals himself to have survived Kuwabara's onslaught and returns with further insults to the late Genkai. His statements enrage Togoro, causing him to attack his older brother. As their battle begins, Yusuke fires an exceptionally large spirit gun shot, launching Togoro out of the ring and destroying the arena. How many arenas do they have? Togoro returns to the ring, unimpressed by Yusuke's strength. In response to Togoro's dissatisfaction, Yusuke, in classic shonen fashion, reveals he's had a power-limiting apparatus on this whole time. Yusuke releases his cuffs, remember the cuffs? And of course, a full blue spirit energy phoenix releases with them. The fight quickly escalates. Yusuke explodes with power, taking on Togoro with a barrage of punches, and Togoro unveils his 100% strength. Form. Togoro becomes unbelievably strong. I don't believe it, do you? He flicks a rock with his thumb at, at the speed of a firing bullet, which is, it should be enough. In an epic fight, I don't like the word, the word epic is so overused. <laughs> In an insane battle, two equal forces, Yusuke's fist and Togoro's thumb, collide. Despite his clearly dominant power, Togoro prolongs the match with Yusuke to draw out his ultimate strength. Why are anime people so supportive of each other? The first thing he does is threaten to kill the audience, including Keiko, Yukina, and Shizuru. Genkai possesses Pu and instructs Togoro to kill one of Yusuke's friends to draw out his full potential. Kuobara accepts his demise with the utmost resolve, running into Togoro's attack. But Kuobara fakes his death and asks Kurama to play along smart. In response to his best friend's death, Yusuke's power skyrockets. Togoro reveals one last form. What? In the sub and manga, this is 120% power. However, the dub says Togoro was just lying. We, okay, that may, okay, I get, okay, that, yeah, that makes sense. He's a villain. <laughs> they do that. Using his remaining strength, Yusuke launches one final spirit gun. Togoro catches it, but the blast proves to be too much. Togoro is annihilated, and the blast turns his body into a white husk which you could argue it already was. And thus, Team Urameshi wins the dark tournament. Amid Yusuke's mourning, Kuwabara reveals that he is still alive. In keeping with his bet, Sakio blows up the arena and ends his own life. Everyone else escapes from the arena unharmed. Botan regrets not picking up a collectible dark tournament mug before departing. 11 months after Yusuke's death, Koenma returns to Spirit World to be greeted by a mountain of paperwork and the now deceased Togoro. Togoro requests to be sent to Limbo for 10,000 years. Why? Genkai and Togoro meet once more in the Spirit World before moving on. Timur Meshi awakes in their hotel room. Yusuke uses his wish from winning the Dark Tournament to request Genkai's revival. The crew departs Hang Neck Island and heads back home. A couple of days later, Shinobi Sensui finds a still living but injured Elder Togoro on Hanging Neck Island. Meanwhile, Itsuki begins opening the tunnel to Demon World. 11 months and two weeks after Yusuke's death, otherwise normal humans begin to develop psychic powers and spatial based abilities called territories. What? Kuwabara realizes he can no longer access his spirit sword. What? And he assumes it's due to the item he received from Suzuki. What? A week later, Yu Kaito, Asado Kido, and Mitsunari Yanagisawa visit Genkai for assistance after Yu Kaito accidentally removes his soul from his own body. Thereafter, the trio become students of Genkai. Kurama gets another first place score on his tests, his classmate Yu Kaito gets second place, and Botan comes to visit Yusuke with a new case regarding dangerous humans. She she promises to tell him more after school, but before she can talk to him, those same three students from before challenge Yusuke to a fight. Overconfident, Yusuke is caught off guard and kidnapped. They send a note requesting that Kuwabara, Kurama, and Hiei meet at the House of Four Dimensions at 11 o'clock to guarantee Yusuke's safe return. After gathering the crew, the quartet heads to the House of Four Dimensions. Upon entering the house, they're faced with a variety of dimensions. 
Upon entering the house, they're faced with a variety of ordeals that require critical thinking rather than fighting abilities. Oh no! <laughs> After freeing Yusuke, Genkai reveals herself as the mastermind behind the kidnapping. Why would she do such a thing? She also reveals Sakio's plan to connect the human and demon worlds has been taken up by an unknown entity. Koenma gives Yusuke similar information about the tunnel, informing the crew it's currently at the stage 2 of 4. Stage 4 will be reached in 3 weeks time, and if the tunnel breaks, hundreds of powerful demons will be unleashed. It turns out that Itsuki is the one at work on the tunnel, but he requires a psychic that can cut through dimensions if he'd like to get through the Kekai barrier, which is what currently separates the human and demon worlds. About a year after Yusuke's death, I changed my undershirt and Yusuke's team and Genkai's psychic split into two groups and scout the nearby Mushiori city. Group 1 is Kurama, Kuwabara, Botan, and Kaito. Group 2 is Yusuke, Genkai, Kido, and Yanagisawa. Group 2 stumbles into the territory of Muroda, a mind-reading psychic. They're able to win him over and use his abilities to locate the enemy group. He's able to locate their leader, Shinobu Sensui. However, Sensui orders his subordinate sniper to take out the telepath. Muroda makes it out alive and has some important new information. They've learned a few code names, Black Angel, Sniper, Doctor, Seaman, Gatekeeper, Gourmet, and Game Master. While at the hospital treating Moroda's wounds, they enter the territory of Doctor. In the process of searching for the good Doctor, Yusuke, Genkai, and Kido split up. The Doctor corners Kido and paralyzes him. When Yusuke enters the room, Kido uses his shadow to tell Yusuke to go after Doctor Kimia. A battle between the Doctor and Yusuke begins. Yusuke grapples with the idea of killing a human, but still shoots the doctor. However, Genkai is able to save the doctor and Yusuke's conscience. The next day, despite the incoming apocalypse, Kuwabara goes to see, uh, Megalica in concert. You guys know that song, Master of Muppets? Just put that in the edit. After the show, Kuwabara and his partied out friends are attacked by the water psychic Seaman with water monsters that are physically located in another dimension. Through grit, determination, and rain, Kuwabara unlocks a blade that can slice through dimensions and defeats Seaman, saving his friends. Kuwabara takes Seaman with him to Team Urameshi's home. Since we, having bugged Seaman, realizes Kuwabara is the one they need to cut the Kekai barrier. So logically, after that, Sensui summons Gourmet to eat Elder Togoro. The day after that, Seaman awakes in front of Yusuke and his pals to an interrogation. Seaman tells Team Urameshi about the infamous Chapter Black Tape, a legendary VHS that documents humanity's most vile crimes. Since we and Sniper reveal themselves to be watching and attack Seaman, who now goes by Mitarai. Kuwabara and Yusuke go after Sensui and Sniper. Sensui begins battling with Yusuke and Ko, all around town, waiting for Kuwabara to manifest his Dimension Sword. Sensui's group captures Kuwabara with the assistance of Game Master and Gourmet's stretchy fingers. As they're taking him to their hideout in a jeep, a determined Yusuke is in hot pursuit on a stolen bicycle. Good luck. Sniper is trailing behind Yusuke and destroys the bike right as he's about to catch up. He marks Yusuke with his territory, allowing him to hit Yusuke no matter where he's located. Mitsurai decides to join Team Urameshi after seeing their altruistic deeds. Yusuke runs around the forest in fear of Sniper, and as Yusuke tires out, a vigilant Hiei joins the fray, taking on Sniper himself and swiftly defeating him. Hiei gives Yusuke a pep talk, uh, by which I mean he fights him. They fight to get his strength back up gets him back into shape by fighting. Team Urameshi regroups and enters the cave housing the tunnel to Demon World. While making their way through the tunnel, they come across the child psychic, Game Master. He's recreated the arcade game Goblin City in real life, fun thing to do. Using the replica, Game Master challenges Team Urameshi to a real life match of Goblin City. The team take turns trying to defeat Game Master, who is of course a master of the game. But Kurama gets in his head by reminding the child that he will die if he loses. Kurama mercilessly beats this kid at, uh, just f***ed up Tetris. Next, the group moves on to the main attraction, Sensui. The rogue spirit detective taunts Yusuke's team, questioning their morality. Yusuke and Ko are given a chance to prove said morality. Sensui says that if they can slay Gourmet for the greater good, Kuwabara will be returned unharmed. Otherwise, they'll continue as planned. Kurama decapitates Gourmet, which seems like overkill, revealing him to be Elder Togoro in disguise. As agreed, Sensui releases Kuwabara, but Itsuki transports everyone other than Yusuke and Sensui to another dimension, giving the detectives a place to fight. Sensui flaunts his superior battle experience throughout the fight, and as Yusuke begins to regain some ground, Sensui reveals another personality, a, a young little fighter named Kuzuya. 
The new personality has a gun for a hand and ruthlessly goes after Yusuke, beating him to the ground and placing an actual gun to his head. Seconds before Yusuke's execution, Koenma comes in to save the spirit detective, deus ex machina. After deciding that talking Sensui down was a futile effort, Koenma removes his pacifier or the mafuken, revealing a near infinite amount of defensive power saved up over centuries. <laughs> when the pacifier is used, it creates another Kekai barrier, one strong enough to stop S-Class demons in their tracks. Yusuke stops Koenma from using it and and then demands that Kazuya switch out to Sensui's strongest personality. That personality being Shinobu, his original persona. For most of this arc, we've been dealing with Minoru. The personality introduces a brand new type of energy, sacred energy, which Koenma uses to contain the Mafuken when he unleashes it in Sensui's hands. Yusuke gets beaten down by the expert combatant Shinobu, which is enough to push him to his emotional limits and finally force him to use his dimension sword to free himself, Hiei, Kurama, and Mitarai from Itsuki's creature. Alas, it's too late as Yusuke falls to Shinobu's skill just as the gang breaks free. So he dies again. So what do we call this period now? After double death? Yusuke's demise prompts the remaining members of Team Urameshi to take Sensui on all at once with, in with their incredible strength. Their battle takes them from the tunnel right through to Demon World. Kuwabara cuts the Kekai barrier on the way over, and King Enma unleashes the previously unheard of Spirit World Special Defense Force to help protect the Earth. The SDF arrive at Demon Cave and take control of the scene. They begin work on closing up the hole to the Demon World, and also, by the way, uh, they've been ordered to kill Yusuke. <laughs> Great. As they're about to eviscerate his corpse, Yusuke glows, activating his Mazoku, or um, convenient demon heritage. Yusuke's change also triggers a transformation in Pooh, who changes from a little tiny flobby thing to like a, a bird, a phoenix bird thing. The duo then head to Demon World so Yusuke can confront Shinobu with his newly found power. In the middle of this big old fight, Yusuke is possessed by his demon ancestor Ryzen, who unleashes Yusuke's strength, granting him tribal tattoos, uh, long hair and sh and um, white stuff. I don't know, there's white stuff. And he beats the sh out of Shinobu. As Shinobu begins to pass on or die, Itsuki arrives to obtain his corpse and they disappear into another dimension never to be seen again. Yusuke and friends return to the human world. Koenma becomes a fugitive of spirit world on the run for assisting the Mazoku demon Yusuke about 13 months after Yusuke's death. Despite returning to human world, Yusuke longs for the demon world and wants to figure out his demonic heritage. He goes to see Genkai regarding his human world qualms. She suggests meeting Kuroko Sato. Kuroko lives out in the middle of nowhere with two spirit-inclined children and a novelist husband. Yusuke bonds with the family, but late at night, Mazoku forces drop by looking for the inheritor of Ryzen's lineage with the goal of bringing him back to the demon world. Without understanding their strength, Yusuke challenges the strongest one to a fight. Always a good idea. He's easily defeated. They smack the sh** out of him. Ryzen's acolytes then grant Yusuke a week to say his final goodbyes. In a very passionate farewell to Keiko, Yusuke promises to return by his 18th birthday in three years. You forgot this kid was 15, didn't you? I forgot. He departs to Demon World with assistance from the SDF, who open a pathway specifically for him. Meanwhile, Kobar is trying to get into uh, prep school. Cool. Better yourself. As Yusuke arrives at an emaciated Ryzen's compound, he immediately starts a fight with his own ancestor. Upon inevitably losing, Yusuke promises to defeat Ryzen and begins training with his acolytes. Meanwhile, Hiei and Kurama leave Human World shortly after. About a year and a half AD, Hiei trains under Mukuro by going up against 500 A-class demons at once. After Hiei surpasses her expectations, Mukuro pits him against one of her strongest fighters, the surgeon who gave him the Jagan Ai Shigure. Hiei wins. He, he wins the fight. It's a fight and he wins it. Kurama reaches Demon World and becomes Yomi's advisor, but soon after, Kurama returns to the human world to settle family issues and recruit six fighters for his personal army. When he comes back to Demon World with his fighters, Yomi promotes Kurama to his second in command. Uh, yeah, now, um, you remember how Yusuke was gonna fight Ryzen? Well, now he's uh, dying from malnutrition. The most powerful demon couldn't, couldn't have a salad. So upon Ryzen's death, Yusuke heads to meet with the other king, Yomi, with Hokushin by his side. Mukuro and Hiei trail behind and Kurama waits in a nearby room in case a fight breaks out, which it seems to do a lot. Yusuke proposes that instead of clashing as armies, they hold a tournament, again, and the winner becomes Demon World's new leader. This would give every demon the chance to lead Demon World. How exciting. Another tournament will be held every three to five years. 
Ryzen's old sparring partners appear to mourn his death, and two years and three months after Yusuke's death, the Demon World Tournament begins with 128 battle royales. Seems like a lot. Most of Yusuke's friends make it through the first round. Seems insane. Yusuke delivers a pure, impassioned speech about fighting, which seems on brand, and tons of face-offs occur in the following round, like Kurama vs. Shigure and Hiei vs. Muguro. Yusuke and Yomi have a fight for the ages, where Yusuke is able to unlock his deeper demon potential. The duel ends in a mutual Rocky style face punch. Mukuro is beaten by Enki and Yomi is defeated by an unnamed demon. Ha! You look stupid! Yusuke wakes up in the hospital after his fight against Yomi and Enki is crowned winner of the Demon World Tournament and thus leader of Demon World. In his first decree, he forbids demons from causing any more mischief in Human World. How nice! Everyone bids their farewells as Kurama returns to Human World and Yusuke stays to wrap up some business. Unfinished business, he's a ghost. Days later, the spirit world permanently takes down the Kekai barrier. In Demon World, Hiei now guards the border between Human World and Demon World. Back in the Human World, Kurama, Kuwabara, Keiko, and Shizuru head off to visit Genkai. They arrive to see Koenma, Botan, and Yukina. Genkai tells the group that she'll be leaving her house in the hands of Yusuke's group when she dies of old age, with the intention to use the property as a safe house for demon kind. Cool. The group goes to the beach before leaving Genkai's land. As Keiko is trotting around in the water, Yusuke returns a year earlier than planned and they share a passionate kiss. A wave washes over them, giving their love story a nice shoujo approved ending. Four years AD, now taking residence in the human world, Yusuke runs his own food cart, feeding people and taking on freelance spirit detective cases, like a spirit private high. Genkai invites the old gang back to her estate and Team Urameshi has a day of nostalgia and relaxation. And that's that whole year, I guess. Five years after Yusuke's death, Yusuke, Kuwabara, Kurama, and Hiei return to Demon World to compete in the next tournament to win the position of Demon World's leader. Thus, the series ends as it began with a fight. So abrupt. I'm Idoi, and thanks for watching Get in the Robot. Let me know what timeline I should tackle next. Ideally, some like uh, FLCL, Fully Cooly. It's 18 episodes. That'd be nice. But if you like this one, uh, consider subscribing. You know, um, listen to my podcast. It's called Dark Tank. You, you'll, you'll get it. You'll like it. Bye.